Hi guys, welcome on board Kilo Mike Niner. In this video, I will show you the cargo control room of this large LNG carrier. So you can see behind me various screens. To familiarize and understand the various controls of the cargo control room, today we have junior first engineer on board. He will introduce us to the various controls of the cargo control room and he will show the importance of CCR and various controls uh, in the car cargo control room. So this video is very helpful for the people who want to join LNG ships and uh, understand how the LNG behaves, the properties of LNG, the various machineries which are used to control the tank pressure, control the tank temperature. So I suggest watch this video till the end. Do not skip the video. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe the channel to get a notification of the videos as soon as I release it. So without wasting any more time, I want to uh, introduce you to the junior first engineer on board. Welcome sir, welcome to Quillo Mike Niner. So I want to introduce you to the junior first engineer on board. He is also called gas engineer and some, some people call him cargo engineer because he is dealing with all the cargo operations on board and uh, he is a class 1 licensed officer and uh, he is serving here as a junior first engineer on board this LNG carrier. I wanted to tell you this is a large LNG carrier on which we are carrying LNG as cargo that is liquefied natural gas and uh, he will I, will I want to first thanks thank you sir to be a part of Kilo Mike Niner and uh, I wanted him to give a brief introduction about him. It's my pleasure to be on this Kilo Mike Niner uh, channel and uh, I want to thank you Khushab for giving me this opportunity to tell you about the LNG carrier. I am Anush Chirvasto. I have graduated from DMET Kolkata and I have been sailing on LNG carriers for past uh, seven years. This is the second most biggest LNG carrier of the world and then here we are carrying more than 2 lakh meter cube of LNG cargo. Thank you sir for the introduction. This podcast is very helpful for the guys who are looking for the opportunities in LNG carriers to learn about cargo because on all the ships the cargo is the most important part. I wanted the viewers to know that uh, what are the properties of LNG cargo which we are carrying. So can you give us brief about the properties of of the LNG cargo, how we are maintaining it, what is the temperature, what is the physical and chemical properties of the cargo. So LNG is one of the most difficult uh, cargoes to carry and to maintain because it's a liquefied gas and the boiling point of LNG is minus 161 degrees Celsius and uh, with the ship, with the terminal it is easy because these tanks which are carrying LNGs are stationary but on ships it is difficult because uh, we are rolling, pitching and we are encountering heavy weather so to maintain Maintain cargo tank pressure is the most challenging things on these LNG carriers. Now there are various kind of LNG carriers. So this one is a Q-Flex type where we are maintaining the pressure primarily by reliquification plant. And then we have some other means also like gas combustion unit where we can burn if or if we have problem in our relic plant then. And then third method is the venting which is uh, should not be done. That is the last uh, measure to do venting but uh, we should not at any cost we should not when the cargo and uh, we should uh, try to control the he told us about various properties of the lng cargos and various method to control the tank pressure so sir i wanted to know that uh, what all challenges we are facing when we are carrying this cargo so being a deck officer i have seen him like operating the reliquification plant like operating the gas combustion unit like operating various cargo pumps in the port uh, like discharge port we have to operate the pumps in the load port we have to operate the uh, HD compressor. Various things, he he's doing multiple jobs while we are in port. Can you give us brief about this challenges which you are facing while you are on your assignment? On As a cargo engineer or a officer responsible for uh, transporting cargo, my job is to bring this cargo from point A to point B, that is from loading port to discharging port. So during loading port, we take cargo and then vapors we return to shore through HD compressor. And then during the transit, we encounter various weathers. Sometimes it is okay, sometimes it is rolling, pitching or uh, extreme heavy weather. Then in that case, we are maintaining cargo pressure and then cargo temperature also as per terminal requirement. 
And then point B, where is the discharge port? There we are uh, discharging cargo. We have uh, five tanks and ten pumps. And then uh, the vapor return is coming from shore. And then we are discharging. So during this transit, the main thing which is there is to control the cargo tank pressure and temperature. So for that, the biggest challenge on these Qflex LNG carriers is the relic plant. It has an enormous capacity, and we have we are having very high amount of cargo that is more than two lakhs meter cube. So to reliquify and and at that too, at minus 161 is itself a challenging task. And there are, uh, of course, we need the support of diesel generators too, so that we can run our relic plant. And sometimes there are uh, breakdowns in relic plant itself or in the diesel generators. Then we switch to secondary means, that is the gas combustion unit. And otherwise, if it is uh, uh, everything runs smooth, then it is smooth. But if challenges come, then we have to uh, stop plant and rectify. And at that time, there is a, a commercial pressure also, how to do it quickly because if we are burning more LNG, it is a loss to everyone, to the charterer, to us and everyone. So we, at all times, we need to minimize gas burning and we, we intend to deliver the loaded quantity to the discharge port, uh, plus minus something uh, which we burned. But always our intention is to give maximum quantity to the discharge port. So like you have told us, uh, there are various challenges to maintain pressure and weather, as you know, you cannot control it. So weather is the main cause of like increasing the pressure if the ship will roll or pitch too much it will definitely increase the pressure of the tanks and to control that we have relic plant we have gas combustion unit as he mentioned that we should not burn the cargo at first place and uh, if the relic is uh, coping up then we will not uh, burn the cargo but sometimes the situation arises like the temp tank pressure is continuously rising so we have to uh, burn the gas burn the BOG in that case. So sir, I wanted to ask you that what all machineries we have on board, like we have the Relic GCU, so what all machineries and what is the power requirement for these machineries or what are the sources we have for the for providing the power to these machineries and where these machineries are located actually how big are they so i want you to tell the viewers regarding so in our uh, cargo plant we have primarily this uh, relic plant which which itself is a big plant so the biggest machine in that plant is the compander we have two companders compander number one compander number two each having motor of capacity 5000 kilowatt 6.6 kV and uh, to supply and that compander the main use is to uh, liquefy nitrogen and uh, to cool the uh, BOG through a cold box. Now on the other part of the cold box there should be BOG right, which is the boil of gas generating from the cargo tank. So that is being supplied by two BOG compressors. So BOG compressors supply gas to the cold box and from the other side compander supply nitrogen to the cold box and then there is a heat ex this heat exchanger decreases the temperature of the BOG and through a separator it gets reliquified and then it is sent back to the tanks. So these are the main machineries of relic tank. Then we have HD compressors for loading when we want to send vapor to shore during loading. So all these machineries are located in compressor room uh, except relic uh, compander which is in the motor room and all the motors for these machinery are located in the motor room. So motor room is the area where all motors are located 6.6 .6 kV. So it is always maintained at a, at a positive pressure. So there are supply fans and there is an airlock system. There are two door system you cannot just open and enter there is a gap there between these two doors uh, as per the IGC code and then uh, that other room is the compressor room where the actual compressors and the cold box are located so in compressor room we always maintain a negative pressure so there is a exhaust fan and uh, it is why it is so because it, uh, there are chances of gas leak in the compressor room. So we always maintain negative pressure so that even in case of a gas leak, the oxygen, the uh, normal air cannot go inside and there are very less chances of uh, creating a flammable atmosphere. And then we have some other means also for safety. We have gas detection system. We have uh, fire smoke detectors and other detectors to immediately trip all the machineries in case there is a gas leak or there is a fire in the motor room. Then second, we have gas combustion unit which is located inside engine room on the uh, upper floors and uh, I'll, uh, from compressor room a uh, line a line goes through gas combustion unit through a BOG master wall and the gas is supplied to GCU for burning and controlling tank pressure there are various safeties which are associated with this uh, line itself uh, uh, 
inside uh, engine room this line which is which goes from gcu hood room to gcu is having a duct and the, in that duct a uh, negative pressure is maintained so that in case in inside engine room if there is a gas leak there will not be any oxygen around it so there will be very less chances of fire almost impossible then this uh, we have four generators for providing power to this relic plant these generators are enormous each generator having capacity of 3800 kilowatt and uh, during the loaded passage or even in the ballast passage when the relic plant is running we need to have at least three generators running for sufficient power to run this sir has explained that uh, the motor room and compressor room that motor room should be maintained on a positive pressure and compressor room should be maintained on a negative pressure so that is very important and we have a air gap in between air lock that is in the motor room that we have two doors so just to make sure that when you have entered the first door lock that door then enter the second door so that is very important safety uh, safety measure to enter the motor room because it will trip some machinery if you open both the doors so that will be a big job then uh, to restart the all the machineries and bring down the pressure so these were this is about the machineries so sir what are what what is the maintenance schedule like what how you are maintaining these machineries to perform satisfactorily throughout the voyage or throughout the tenure throughout their maintenance cycle so what all measures you are taking and what all maintenance you are carrying out on these uh, machineries on board we have a planned maintenance system and it is highly detailed and what maintenance needs to be carried out on each machinery is as per the schedule and uh, what all job has to be done on that particular machinery there is a extensive description so we are basically following that only and uh, as far practical things are uh, considered during the ballast voyage when we don't have cargo or we have very less cargo then we do major maintenance like gas combustion unit there are four fans combustion air fans dilution air fan so so we are doing a damper maintenance for that we are doing greasing and we are checking how is the condition whether any air leak on the actuator side or how is it moving uh, all the limit switches are working or not so these and then burner we inspect igniter so gas combustion unit this these things we are doing in the uh, ballast voyage and if there are two types of ballast voyage one is the cold ballast and one is the warm ballast in case of warm ballast we don't have much cargo and we don't need to pull down the tanks for loading but in cold ballast, last we have enough heel around 700 meter cube to cool the tanks and to run our relic plant so in that case in cold ballast we are not doing any major maintenance on a relic plant only if there is some problem then only but in case of a bomb ballast we are stopping relic plant then we are doing various kinds of uh, maintenance like uh, we are checking how the these bog compressor uh, ddv controllers are performing we, whether we need to do calibration for them or a calibration of valves for the compander or some lube oil filters or other or any other maintenance which arises from the pms these are the major maintenance that we do on uh, these cargo this ship is fitted with the relic plant so there are some other lng carriers which are not fitted with the relic plant because they use the steam to run their propulsion those are the steam ships so sir what is the main difference between these ships like motor ships and steam ships how a person can differentiate between these two ships all lng carriers are mainly differentiated by the type of propulsion they have so like in our qflex vessel we have two man bmw engines and those are burning heavy fuel oil but in steam ships we have a big steam plant in the engine room and two big boilers that are producing steam and then it is being provided to the steam turbine and then it is uh, running the vessel so those ships are called conventional ships the steam ships are called conventional ships then we have some new ships also like xdf and megi which have also ha which are also big two stroke engines but have capability of gas burning so except qflex vessels all other vessels have capability of gas burning in the main engine whether it is a main boiler or it is a two stroke engine but here on qflex vessels we minimize or we we don't do any gas burning so it is the most efficient kind of ship uh, of, out of all the lng carriers however it is the most challenging one also and we need lot of uh, day and night work to keep it running but this is the main difference and uh, there is one more type which is dfd where we have only uh, four generators and those are burning and providing to electric motors and those two are uh, running so as we know big ships are coming with big challenges so as he mentioned i like uh, qflex is a bit difficult ship 
to do compared to the conventional or steam shift sir i wanted to ask you the last question that uh, when you are controlling the machineries from the ccr so who is the one checking locally they are the machinery and giving you the status in cargo department we are basically three people me and chief officer are there in the ccr and we have one more gas oiler which is there on the deck which is doing primarily the job of checking all these uh, walls position or all the machineries whether they are running properly or taking regular rounds checking all the bilge wells and then during major car car operations like uh, loading or discharging everybody is there everybody means all the deck crew is there and during uh, the initial starting or during stopping all the crews are different uh, domes of the cargo are present check whether uh, all walls are working efficiently all are showing correct and they are matching with the ccr uh, position so it is a collective uh, team work for a good successful cargo operation as sir mentioned everywhere like in bridge there is team work in ccr there is team work on deck it is team work in engine room it is team work so team work plays a very important role so like that for a successful operation our team should work good so thank you sir for giving us such a vast ocean of knowledge about the lng carrier and the lng cargo so i think this knowledge will be helpful to someone out there who is watching this video the last uh, what is your message to the viewers who are watching this video my message to viewers is that uh, merchant navy is itself a very challenging job but once you are there on board and uh, during your first ship if you like this profession then you will be at peace with it and uh, there is a handsome amount of uh, salary that is being paid and then there is uh, also a uh, wide uh, chances to see the different countries of the world you can travel many places and if you get a chance to come on lng carrier then it's like a, a cherry on the top so these ships are most sophisticated ones and most challenging ones but then if you are here you will get you will gain lot of knowledge and uh, about various uh, things uh, and uh, uh, you will have a good life so as sir mentioned these are the most sophisticated ships on the salaries directly proportional to the risk you are taking on board these ships so these ships are carrying a cargo as sir mentioned it is at minus 160 degree centigrade and we are dealing with the high pressure and there is flammability hazard there is explosion hazard blevy these all things are associated with this so how much big the risk is the money will be that much big so thank you very much sir to impart us with such a knowledge on about lng carriers so thank you very much so if you like the video please like share and subscribe my channel so that you will get the notification of my videos as soon as i release it this is kilomike niner signing off